Romance at a glance. Uh huh. Romance at a glance. What you say? Romance at a glance. Go ahead, girl. Hello and welcome to the finale of season four, Romance at a Glance. I am your host, Shawnee, and with me is my co-host, Bridget. She has been here for this magical season of historicals. We've gone to the Scottish Highlands. We've gone to Regency. We have had dukes and other things. Bridget, how are you enjoying this season? Well, Shawnee, I can tell you right now that I enjoyed it quite a bit. I had a blast in the historical realm with you. I uh, finally understand the draw, which to be fair, I never tried to understand the draw before, but I understand the draw. I like that it feels different enough from my sort of normal life that I can forgive a lot of behavior, that I can kind of ignore a lot of things. Chauvinist behaviors, part of the times, whatever. And I also like, you know, I like imagining the world and the costumes and the ton and like all the different, like I, I thought it was a really fun season. And I thank you for choosing all the books with our Instagram friends and for taking me on this journey. You're mighty welcome. I'm actually looking forward to our next season, season five, which is the journey you're about to take me on. And it is smutty. And that's all I need to know. <laughs> <laughs> It is smutty indeed, you guys. I want to thank all of you for giving me some great recommendations. I promise you, I looked through all of them. I read the descriptions. I read the little like free snippets for a lot of books, a lot of authors. And the 10 that we have chosen are going to be a treat. Woohoo! Treat yourself. We're going to treat ourselves. Yeah. That's what we're going to do, Bridget. We're going we're gonna to treat ourselves. Yes, <laughs> we really are. And... Make sure you tune in next week. We will not have an episode because it's our break in between seasons four and five. However, we will have an episode where we go through the reasoning behind why I picked all of these, why I feel like they fit into the holiday theme. So I'm going to tell you why I equated them to each holiday. And let me tell you right now, some of them are a stretch even for me, but I had to choose the book or I had to choose the author and I just made it all work. And you guys are welcome. (laughs) So next week, we're going to be talking all about that. We have a giveaway coming up. We're going to announce during that episode or talk more about during that episode. So make sure you come for our season five preview. I promise I will keep it pretty short and funny. I promise to the people, Shawnee. Hey, I believe you, Bridget. I want to give a shout out to our newest patron, Katarina. We are so happy to have you. We're so happy to get smutty with you, talk romance and everything that's inappropriate for a PG-13 rating. That is why we are rated R. And we love you for being here to get a little nasty with us. Hi, hi, hi. Now, what else do you got for the people, Bridget? I got a lot of things, Shawnee. On Tuesday, coming up, October the 13th, we will be releasing our interview with the one, the only, Julia Quinn. Julia Quinn. Julia! J- 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 Julia Quinn! Nah. You guys, when I say that we were beyond excited and that Shawnee was losing her mind, I cannot tell you enough. It was the best thing ever. She was so funny and gracious and just like full of life. And we had such a great talk. So make sure that you are following us and subscribed wherever you're listening to this podcast. You do not want to miss that conversation. It was wonderful. And we have another big historical romance author. I will keep it a secret for now because we haven't recorded and I don't want to jinx. Uh, but she will be popping up sprinkled into season five because we couldn't book her in early in season four. And I'll leave it there. But she's big. It's exciting. We are so thrilled that she agreed to come on the show. So, so thrilled. I just want to share with our dear listeners that when Bridget says that I was excited, she is um, it is the understatement <laughs> of the century. I had to sit in my car and get out all of my giggles and screams and really ridiculous f- first one-liners. Um, so I wouldn't say them to... Um, ma- How are you? <laughs> Julia Quinn. Julia, Julia. Hello. How are you? How are you? Uh, uh, <laughs> my name is Sean. Shawnee. Julia. May I call you Julia? How are you? May, <laughs> darling. May I call you Julia? Darling. I, I mean, I had to sit in the car and really get them all out. So that uh, so that when she came on the screen, I was composed. And uh, Bridget will tell you, I I mean, I did a fairly good job of staying composed. But you did an excellent job. Mm-hmm. And I'm very impressed that you only asked two questions after you knew I was trying yeah. to wrap the interview yeah. up because we had had enough of her time, and I was worried that we were cutting too much into her day. 
And you only asked two questions after you knew I, I knew. was trying to wrap it I up. Knew. So I'm very proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> I sure did. I was like, I was like, Bridget, go kill me, but I'm gonna ask these two questions right now. <laughs> You ruined my perfect segue close, but I, did. I accept it. I did. So it's okay. I, I, I made it work. We made it work. Your questions were good. Her answers were good. It's not that I didn't think you had good questions. Oh, no. Because you were asking them the whole, but we were already at like, I don't know, an hour and 20 minutes or something. And I was worried that she was going to like have to leave at some point to Listen, do things. I was clearly disrespectful, but I was like, I don't know when we'll have her on the line again. I must <laughs> That's questions. I think she liked us. I think she would come back to the show if we read another one of her books in the I future. Do. I think, I think we did back. a good interview. And we did a good job of not picking like the same old questions I feel like that she had been answering. For sure. You know, or whatever. So For sure. I would just like to say that Bridget was patient with me and I appreciate you so much. Now, Bridget, I'm so excited for this week because we have read The Bride by Julie Garwood. Narrated by Rosalind Landor, who was a classic for our historical season. She has shown up at least three times as a narrator for different authors. I tell people she's she's classic. She's classic. She's amazing. Um, and uh, I'm actually ready to get into this last book of historicals. It's bittersweet for me. I'm like, we're leaving the land of pomp and circumstance. But I am so glad that we did this. So Bridget... Are you ready to get into the bride? Uh, let's get it pop 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 in. Okay, Shani, so you already have talked about the audio narrator and she just does a great job again. I mean, she seems to be kind of the go-to of iconic this genre and like Shani mentioned in her tasty audio tidbit the other day, if you find a narrator that you like, go and look and see what else they are reading and then just listen to all those books. You might find authors you don't know about, but you know for sure that you'll like the dulcet tones of their voice. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What did you think about the old cover? You know, the cover actually did it for me. I was looking at it. I was like, it's all serene. It's the Highlands. Um, And it's, again, classic historical cover of of a landscape. In the far distance, you can see the keep. Um, but there's a little white and black horse, and that's her horse and his horse. Um, and I thought it was just a, a simple classic cover that that I accepted. I accepted it. Shani, I think we had a different cover. We totally did. Uh-oh. Okay. So, very exciting, you guys. I didn't even know that cover existed. I love it. It's the Highlands. It's green. It's beautiful. Yeah. I had the cover where it's, this was my favorite cover of our season. So it's a tartan on the bottom half. Shawnee's looking it up as we speak, so she can weigh in. But you guys, it's the the cover that has the red tartan at the bottom, and the top is kind of like old parchmenty looking, and inside is like a cutout, like you're looking through a window at her running away through the Highlands. My favorite cover. I was like, oh, I know what we're doing. I know what this book about. I was in. I was in for it. I liked it so much. Holy cow! I have never seen this cover. This is. Beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my goodness. Yes, it is. I love this. Yes, this is my favorite cover of the season. I agree. So you've heard it here first, you guys. Foot down. My foot is down. down. (laughs) Favorite cover of the season for historical romance, Highlander romance. Bam. Bam. If Bridget's foot's down, that that's it. That's it. it. Nothing's changing. (laughs) <laughs> so true. Okay, so this was part of a series called the Laird's Fiancés series. This is book one. There is a book two. It's called The Wedding. Um, I liked this book so much. Spoiler, that I went on and read like the free um, promo of the next book. And I'm also very excited about that book. I will be reading that book shortly and hopefully getting my shit together and posting it on Patreon as soon as possible. And I will tell you now what the book is about, Shawnee. Dear listeners, Shawnee knows. She read it. If you have not read it, it is about kings who are matchmakers. (laughs) That's what this book is about. (laughs) So the Scottish king and the English king basically decide that they need to marry a Scottish lord with, I can't call them lairds the whole time. I'm sorry, I'm going to call him a lord. A Scottish lord with an English um, daughter of a baron and so they pick Alec Kincaid to take one of Baron Jameson's daughters. And he is trying to hide away his youngest daughter, Jamie, 
who has a man's name. <gasps> Shock. Guess. Shocking. Everyone's surprised. <laughs> And he wants to hide her away because he uses her to run his whole household, take care of him, take care of everything. She, like, works to the bone, takes care of her older sisters. And the only person who really, like, loves her and takes care of her is the stable master, Beak, who loves her and raises her like a daughter. He realizes that the Lord is her only chance to get away. And so he kind of, like, finagles the situation to make sure that he meets her and takes her with him. And it turns out that his friend and ally Daniel is also there to get a bride. And so he chooses the sister Mary and they whisk them away literally hours after meeting them. They marry them and take them from their homes. Don't even stay a night for dinner. So can these English women fit in with the rugged Scots? Will Alec be able to bend to make his wife happy? We shall see, Shawnee. We shall see. Yes, we shall see. We shall see. Bridget. Oh my God. Yes. Okay. So... I l- really love this book. Okay. I love this book so much. This is my book. favorite book of season five, season four. It's my favorite cover, my favorite book. Yeah. This is de- definitely um, high marks for me uh, from the very beginning. So, one thing I have to say is that, like, Jamie's relationship with her father, right? Uh, Baron Jameson, is like borderline. Cre- oh, incestual. Yes. Oh, he's a creep. Yes. That man's a creep. I mean, yes. I think the only thing she wasn't doing was satisfying his sexual needs. And I kind of felt like sure. it was coming. Like, you know what I mean? For sure. <laughs> like, he didn't have a wife. For sure. It had been a while, you know? Yes. And I kind of feel like yes. Zeke was like, yo, if I don't get her out of here, that's what's coming down the pipeline for her. And it was it was just, it was a little weird. It was a little weird. Or she, or she's going to be sold to this other dude who's a piece of shit. And I don't want that either. Yeah. And I don't, like, I'm not her real dad, so I can't really stop any of this. Um, first of all, I think the intro of Jamie was great. Um, I loved that she's very, like, capable and that she, like, teases Beak. And, like, their relationship for me was so sweet and yeah. like endearing and really gave me a side of her. So like seeing how she like steps in, she's the youngest, but she like commands the house, takes care of her sisters. Is like, sh- everyone shut up and tell me in order what happened. And then Beak is like, that scene, did you read the letter? It seems weird they would leave you out. She's like, well, I trust my dad. And he's like, you're an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> um, and... I, I thought it was good. I thought they established everything, like she established everything super well mm-hmm. and quickly, but with not like a dump, but more like dialogue of like, oh my God, he's a murderer. He couldn't be a murderer. I heard he killed someone. Like you got to hear all of it, the conjecture sort of out loud. Yeah. Um, which I like. Did you, uh, I have a question. So are violet eyes like a thing I didn't know about? Do people, what color is violet? Because I thought violet was more in the purple range than the blue range. So, but then I was like, well, maybe I just don't know what violet is. <laughs> That's the, <laughs> the whole book I get just kept thinking like, have I never known the color violet? Well, it's always funny because like violet is like that color um, in the rainbow that artists know about and like they don't teach you about as a kid right so it's like red orange yellow green blue purple but really it's green blue violet um and no so i hear violet eyes all the time in books and i am like what are they a vampire or a where uh, some mythical yeah. creature with with purple eyes um i don't know what they mean when they say violet eyes. I honestly just take that every time i read it i just take that as they have an abnormally and I'm normal um, kind of a hybrid of eyes. Like some people have like blue. dark blue or something. Yeah, like a really deep blue or like some people have like a blue green, you know, meld, yeah. you know, that sort of thing. Honestly. They're just striking. They're very striking. Yeah, when they say, this is what we're to take exactly. from that. Okay. When, they, when they say violet eyes. Because I was like, I was like, yo, I've been to England and Scotland. And I have never seen a violet violet. eyed human being (laughs) in my life. And then, honestly, the whole book, I I didn't, of course, look it up. That would have been the easiest thing. But the whole book, I was thinking, do I just not know what violet is? Am I just (laughs) not aware of violet as a color? (laughs) So, thank you for setting me straight. Um, I, so I thought Alec and Daniel's intro was also really funny. this was one of my favorite quotes. I have like 30 from this book, but I'll start with this. But uh, I just thought it was like, it's just like, just put their character so perfectly. They fully expected to spend little more than an hour or two at Jameson's holding. 
That would surely be enough time, they'd reasoned, to eat a full supper, choose their brides, marry them if there was a priest in residence, and be on their way. I was just like, <laughs> you crazy motherfuckers. You're just like, yeah, an hour? Sure. We'll just have a quick snack, hop on a bride, marry her, and get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, I could not imagine this. It was so funny. They're just like, yeah, it seems perfectly reasonable to take them from their homes at a moment's notice. And like, they haven't packed. Like, they don't know they're leaving. It's totally fine. I, I, you know, the one thing I really liked about this book was that um, it, it let me go back into suspending my, like, disbelief or I don't know if that's the right term. But if you had this independent woman who she was taking care of her family, but she could hunt, she could do all these things. Then you had these guys who were raised in the time. And so they're a bit chauvinistic and, you know, and what they are. And like, I really enjoyed this book because I got to accept it. I got to be like, these are Highlanders. This is how it was. Yes. Yeah, this is 1100. Yes. Like, this is not recent. This is back in the dizzy. Exactly, you know? And I was reading different reviews, you know, on it. And they were like, oh, do I want to read a book on misogyny? And I was like, it's 1100. Like, yeah. you know, Scotland, what What did you want? And for, for, for that time period, this book is very progressive in terms of its storytelling, you know? And I realized that it kind of made me take a deeper look at how I'm rating books. All right. Uh, let's talk about the daintiest of the dainties. She's actually not that dainty. I thought it was funny that he kept being like, she's so weak and she's like not complaining yeah. and like trudging along like a little badass. And he like keeps expecting her to, and like she even like throws that dagger and kills that bandit. And he's still not like, how the fuck do you know how to throw a dagger? Yeah. He doesn't like question it. He's just like, you killed a man too. <laughs> like, I'm well, like, aren't you curious, yeah. bro? <laughs> I mean, so Jamie off the bat, she just gets like all the points because like, first of all, when she wore black to her wedding, which I thought was really yes. great. She's like, I'm not marrying you. And then I love how the chapter is like, you know, and a few hours later. And she married him. <laughs> she married him. Um, but she wears black to the wedding, which he gets a kick out of. And I like the dynamic of when they first go on the road because uh, she doesn't understand that she's, she doesn't understand that he's joking with her a lot of times, uh, which you know I can relate to as somebody who's hyperliteral and I don't know when people are joking. So he's clearly <laughs> making these jokes and they're going way over her head. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. they're just trying to learn each other. And it was a very simple way of showing how you can be miscommunicating while people just from having two different senses of humor, you know? And that's that's a very real thing that happens. And I like when she throws a dagger and kills the guy. Um, and then she doesn't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. She's like, how many people did you kill? I'm going to have to... The, the whole thing shillings. with the coin... The, the, <laughs> So the whole book, she's paying coins to the priest for indulgences so that, like, he doesn't go to hell or, like, you know. So she's, how many men did you kill? And she's like, oh, four shillings. So she's going and <laughs> paying this priest. And every night the priest puts all the money back in the box. And so some days he gets one and some days he gets ten. Yeah. Uh, depending on how she feels Alex's Alex's soul is doing <laughs> during the day. <laughs> and he's like, well, don't you need a coin for yourself? And she's like, shh, shh, shh. I don't want to talk about it. talk about it. <laughs> He was trying to kill me. It's yeah, fine. It's fine. And he's like, what about the guys trying to kill me? And she's like, I will give some indulgences. <laughs> I like. I think it's cool, too, that she um, and added a little something that she doesn't tell him that she speaks Gaelic um, mm -hmm. or whatever. So that gave them something to play with. This book, to me, yes. was a whole lot of relationship um, building, uh, which I really liked. Because uh, there was that murder thing, but to me it was kind of a little bit off in the distance of the story. And the story was really about their relationship, them getting to know each other, the conflicts that they're having, um, and that they're overcoming. And there were still, even though they were butting heads, there was still a love story growing that you could believe in. It wasn't like he was a dick, but she was still falling in love. Yeah. One thing I liked about Jamie in the book was that she didn't accept his... So, like, at the beginning of the book, he's like, well, you're my wife, you're my property, yeah. so, like you do what I say. And she's like, well, do I do what you say all the time? And she was like, what about this situation? Yeah. What about this situation? And he's like, you don't need duties. Like, let your hands get soft again. Like, he was trying to tell her, like, I want to take care of you. You don't have to, like, work yourself to the bone. Like, your dad was, like, treating you like a slave. Um, but she was like, not have any duties? Like, you don't want me to be a part of your household? You don't value yeah. me? And he's just like, <laughs> he's like, what? And she's just like, 
uh, one of my quotes is actually about that. She's just like, he's, um, you know, telling her she's not strong and all this other stuff. And as she's going to bed, um, she's like, unless of course you're sleeping, Alec, then my puny little hands would be strong enough. Don't you suppose? Like she's going to kill him. Go. Good night, husband. <laughs> I pray you have pleasant dreams. <laughs> Alex's laughter followed her behind the stream. Did I misunderstand Gavin said, or did your wife just threaten to murder you? You didn't misunderstand. Like <laughs> I loved that within the boundaries of the world. Yeah. She was like, no, I let me move the kitchens while you're gone. Come on, let me help. Like, yeah. I want to fit in here. I want to be a part of this. Like, this is my land now, too. Yeah. Um, and there's a there's a part in the book, though, where it is acknowledged that Jamie gets her validation from being needed. Like, yeah. because she'd never felt fully a part of the family she was in and that she had to earn her, her keep. So that's why yeah. she wants to be of use in his household, because then she has value for herself. Yeah. You know, and she recog- and he recognizes that. Mm-hmm. And so he's like, yeah, you can heal these people. Yeah, you can do these things. What thing did you think it was really funny that she like started like four different wars in her first <laughs> week? Because she just like knew, didn't realize like, oh, I can't take care of this baby because he's my enemy's yes. baby. And the guy comes. So she she heals this little baby. And it turns out the baby is the son of a a, a different lord. And he comes thinking that she kidnapped the baby and it's dead. And he's like, give me my dead so I can bury it. And she's like, who's dead? What are you talking about? <laughs> it's and just nappy. the baby just, yeah, the baby just fell asleep. <laughs> she's like, you better shut up and stop shouting right. She's like screaming at him. Better stop screaming right now. You're going to wake up this baby. I just got to sleep. <laughs> he's like, give me my son. You're a nasty man. You better get <laughs> like shames him and like tells him he's an old fool. And you better get off their land and all this stuff. And, um. Of course, like, he's like, you know, <laughs> all right, we're going to war then. You stole my baby. <laughs> There's just so many funny moments yeah. where and she's then when, when she gives her, her sister sanctuary. And, yeah. And, uh, and Alex, like, Daniel, come get your wife. Daniel's, like, all come prepared your wife. to fight. And he's like, look, bro, we're not fighting. Look, bro. Come get your wife. In fact, if I demand you come get your wife or I will war on you uh, yeah. if you don't pick her yeah. up. <laughs> Yeah, like please get her immediately. I don't like her. She's terrible. All if you what was, what did he say? He said if you don't come get her right now, you get both wives. Get both. And Daniel's like I don't want them both. <laughs> that was really funny. Uh, I thought that was funny. I did think there was a little bit of a like Jamie doing too much in in general with everything. Like she was saving everybody. The the boy from the oh, from for the sure. boar. She was the the queen of healing, the queen of archery, the queen of, you know, just really, yeah. you know. And I was like, it's like throwing all the things at her. It felt like freaking but I, Snow White, the, Cinderella. <laughs> like, totally. The one reason that it didn't bother me is that all of these things she was doing weren't successful until the very, very end. Like behind the scenes, he was cleaning up all these messes yeah. that she was making and like fixing, you know, she was always getting, I thought the getting lost thing was just funny in general. Um, Cause she's like going off to try and warn Andrew and she gets lost. <laughs> and they're like, did, did she change her mind? And he's like, no, thank God. She's just lost. She doesn't know where she is. <laughs> like, but I feel like the, it would have been harder to swallow. Cause she was like kind of a saintly character in that sense if she didn't constantly fuck up. Yeah. Like, her intentions are good. She saves the baby. But she also doesn't ask anyone if she should. Yeah. She doesn't ask, like, she, she doesn't, doesn't... know the rules of the highlands. She doesn't do the proper, like, you know, she doesn't yeah. do things in the proper way or the proper order. And so she causes a ton of problems, <laughs> which I thought was... I thought that was the reason for me that it didn't feel like she was saintly. Yeah. And also because she had such a bad temper and would, like, shout at him. So she wasn't, like, the perfect little subservient wife and, like, yeah. oh, but you're being mean to me and I'm sad, but I'm so perfect. Yeah. And look, I healed all the children. She was just, like, well, you big brute, I, I'll tell you. <laughs> like, like she would get mad at him also, or he would tease her. She also would lie to everybody and be, like, oh, yeah, he said, he said it was fine. He said it's fine. I moved the kitchens. <laughs> totally. Yes. You know, totally. and she gets all his men to help and. And like yeah. be her accomplices and that sort of thing. So, oh. uh, so there was that aspect which I thought was nice. I did like their sexual interplay. I know like their her first mm-hmm. like the deflowering scene, um, or whatever was like slightly dubious consent. I was here for it. It was fine. Um, oh, totally. Yeah. <laughs> she also, yes, it was dubious. 
she was like, are we going to now? And he was like, yeah. And she was like, she basically was like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> She's like, you know, she knew it was going to happen. It, you know, you know, he's my husband. Yeah. She, but she was like, uh, we, we can't have sex. At some point she was like, she was like, you're like, we yeah. can't have sex. Or I don't want to have wait. sex. We, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, and then the author wrote like a half hearted, like half hearted plea, you know, or whatever. Yeah. As the description yeah. of it. And it's interesting when you add that kind of words because it allows you to um, kind of think about. Imagine she's like, oh, no. Yeah. We can't, like, Alec. Yeah. Like, like, <laughs> like, I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. And then he's like, I'm a, I'm going to put this dick in you. That's what's about to happen right now. And she's cool. like, okay. And then she was like, well, if we must. <laughs> yeah, but, basically. But it's like this, it's kind of sometimes the equivalent of when, you know, when you wake up in the morning and you're ready to go in your partner's sleep. And so you just start like, you just start messing with them and they might be sleeping. And they go like, uh-uh. And they try, like, try to hit you off or whatever. And you keep playing with them and then they wake up and they be like all into it. And there's no, yeah. there's no word for that. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not going, they're not there going like, you raped me this morning. You know, yeah. like, it's just, yeah. it's, it's like you're warming up and you're playing. You're warming them up. Warming them up. And yeah. then. He can, conv- he basically convinced her. Yeah. He was like, let me just kiss you a little bit. Let me just suck on your titties a little bit. <laughs> let me just finger you a little bit. And then she was like, okay, you can have sex yes. with me now because <laughs> you have crossed all of these barriers. <laughs> and again, like. I definitely didn't feel like it was a true bodice ripper because he definitely didn't like force himself on yeah. her. Mm-hmm. Um, and she was, you know, in in staying true to her character, she was a very practical person. She like ran her whole household. She took care of all this stuff. She was like, okay, well, I know I'm his wife now. I know this is part of it. So I'm going to like make, you know, do the best I can and make the best of it. Yeah. And I thought it was cute that she was like, you know, wanting reassurance. And she was like, so... Uh, was it uh good for you? And he's like, was what good? She's like, stop teasing me. How dare you tease me about this? You know what I'm asking you. And um, and he's like, you'll get better with practice. And I love that she uses that same thing with Mary because Mary's husband won't have sex with her. And because he's like ashamed that she used Jamie as her shield. Yeah. And she's like crying all the time and he has a mistress and he's like, I don't know what to do with you. And so Jamie's like, Go to him and tell him to keep his mistress that he needs more practice. And when he's ready, he can come to you. And so she used that same like psychology, which I which I really liked. Yeah, I thought it was I thought it was good. I thought I like their sex play. I like his dirty talk when he talks mm-hmm. in Gaelic to her. Oh yeah. And she can't respond because she's not supposed to know Gaelic. I thought that was Was that one of your favorite quotes? Oh yeah. Absolutely. It was one of my favorite quotes. Did you write it? Read it. What'd of you get? Of course I of course I wrote it down, Johnny. You know me. Read it. Um, he took great delight in telling her what he wanted to, her to do to him with her soft, wet mouth, how he wanted her to take him inside her again, how he wanted to feel her squeezing him tight. He spoke in Gaelic, of course, just to confuse her. Oof. And she's, she, I would be, I would be a puddle. A puddle. Oh. A puddle. Talk dirty to me, man. Talk dirty Talk to dirty me. dirty to me. That show mm. will work every day of the week. I don't care. Every we'll day never get week. old. Never, ever, Never. ever get old. I am into it. I, Shawnee, I knew you liked this scene where she, so she has just saved this boy from a stag and like sent him to run off. Alec catches up to her and then he like chases her yeah. and she's like, you can't mean to. And Not he's like, daytime. oh, I mean to. <laughs> Not in the daytime. <laughs> and then she's like, screams with laughter and he's, she's like running and then he catches her and yeah. pushes her up against a tree takes her clothes off and I was like, ooh, mm, mm, ooh. Mm, 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 mm. ooh. She about to get it. Mm, she mm. about to get it. She gonna get it on a tree. Get it on a tree. Get it on a tree. Yo, get it on a tree. Get bark on the back. Bark on the back. Bark on the back. Bark. Ow, that hurts. <laughs> <laughs> it does hurt. I've had it. It's, it's, it's not the most comfortable. It's not the worst, but it's not it's the not most the comfortable. It's not the worst, but depending on how vigorously you're going, it is, yeah. it can be uh, definitely hard. Can but be doggy style. rugs. Same with rugs. Mm-hmm. Rugs. Yeah. You see, you always see those pictures where they're like in front of the fireplace on a rug. And I'm like, that's fucking rug burn on the back mm-hmm. and the tushy, yep. maybe the knees. Mm-hmm. I, it's, you know, it's nice in the moment. And then afterwards, you're like, I need some salve. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? Maybe a nice, maybe a nice pack. I like, see, for me, I'm like, 
I, I see all those with, you know, the the freaking back on the tree or like same thing on mm-hmm. the rug. And I'm like, these are great places for doggy style. Put your hands on the tree, mm-hmm. bend it over. Mm-hmm. That's the position mm-hmm. you want to be in. In front mm-hmm. of the fire, on the rug, doggy style. That's the position. Mm-hmm. The light on your face. You can see yeah. you see him real good. You look over your shoulder. Yeah. You make that the eye fire contact. Glistening on the boobs, glistening. you know? Mm-hmm. That's nice. Yeah. That's a nice visual. He's grabbing the titties from up top and you're just like, yo, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Or or your doggy style, but in that position, I don't I don't know the name of, of this position, but you're kind of doggy style and he's sitting up and you're actually sitting up too. Oh yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know, and he's yeah. holding you in that position right yeah. there. And you got the firelight all on, on you. Oh, Bridget. Yeah. Talk about yummy. Oh, girl. Oh, girl. Yummy. You guys. Girl. So, girl. me. Girl. <laughs> girl. 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 I forgot, girl. I forgot my name. I, for, I, for, I forgot I it. I, 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 I um, am going to move soon. Speaking of fireplaces. Uh, and by soon, I mean like in the next year. And one of the places that I was looking at on Zillow today um had three fireplaces. And I was like, we are in Southern California. <laughs> For what reason could you possibly need not one, not two, but three fireplaces <laughs> in your home? I could understand if you had like one outside and one inside. Because like an outside fireplace in California is really nice because yeah. we have nice weather all year, ro- all year round. Yes, we do. Hate on me if you want to. It's <laughs> nice here all the time. We pay the price. The houses are so expensive. Um, but, you know... Three is excessive indoors. It's excessive. Mm-hmm. Like, this is not the Midwest. We're not trying to keep this house warm with a fire. We're just doing it for ambiance. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's like, every year we put on the fireplace, if it gets to 50 degrees, it's like the, it's like the perfect fireplace weather for me. Yeah. Now, for me, as a Californian, yeah. like, having been born here and then also lived in Miami, it, like, I've had a fireplace in both places and if it gets 50 degrees we're putting on the fireplace and we're roasting marshmallows out the fireplace and we're doing a whole hot chocolate inside thing. or out inside or outside inside inside and if you're from like the midwest where it snows and it's 50 degrees you're outside with those 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 uh fucking shorts those 50 degrees is nice yeah it's like shorts and those st- uh, sativa shoes frisbees or whatever oh, tivas. <laughs> oh. tiva shoes she doesn't even know what tivas are called why are we all the people tivas. in the midwest are wearing tivas, tivas. <laughs> yo Birkenstocks a lot of Birkenstocks, Birkenstocks in the Midwest too you know a lot of toe action is out you know and a lot of toe action you know the funniest yeah. thing is I couldn't remember what are they called Tevas Tevas I couldn't mm-hmm. remember what they were called though. I was talking to somebody and I was like uh, and I was like you know those white guy shoes that, that they be wearing and my, <laughs> my friend was like laughing at me she's like Shani what are you talking about and I literally typed in white guy sandals and Tevas were the first oh, yeah. sandal that, yeah. and I was like you see mm-hmm. even Google knows <laughs> Mm-hmm. Those are white guy yeah. shoes. We all, my whole family, and probably my children will too at some point, but we all as children had Tevas. So we all had, call it Tiva Tan. We all had a Tiva Tan. And uh, it's a white people thing, Sean. We all had Tiva Tans. Really and and uh, it's, like, it's great. It's like black people have shower shoes. They're very, very comfortable shoes. <laughs> I imagine they have to be though. Like I won't put them on because out of principle, but like it, to me, they're the equivalent of like, you know, black people have shower shoes. That they wear as like sandals with like socks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. Like those were actually yeah, yeah, yeah. those were meant to slide the slides, slides yeah, or like slides, Adidas slides. You yeah. know, but they are shower shoes. That's what they were originally designed to be, you know, for the yeah. for the locker room or whatever. And I'm like, those are the equivalent of Tevas. <laughs> See, I never so I obviously wore those because I played sports. So I had my Adidas sandals, my Adidas slides. And I wore them everywhere. I would wear them to the bone. I mean, I would rub the nubs. Remember when they had the nubs <laughs> yes. on them? All the nubs would be gone. And then I would finally like beg my parents for a new pair. And then I would get a new pair and like restart. And I would only wear them with socks if I had a game. So I was wearing my socks and shin guards. Yeah. Or if me, but like if the game was over, I always took my socks off because I was so sweaty. So I was usually barefoot in them or with my slippers. I would put my slippers inside my shoes, but never socks. <laughs> and my husband got them and he wore them with white socks. And I was, when I say mortified to the core, <laughs> I was filled with embarrassment. <laughs> and I was like, honey, you have killed the romance. <laughs> I can't wear those shoes anymore. It's too much for me. I can't do it. <laughs> and he's like, everyone's doing it. And I was like, who's doing it? He's like, everyone at the office wears them like this. And then he found images on the internet. And in fact, a lot of people do wear them like that. And I still think they're terrible and you should not do it. So, uh, Oh, yeah. I think my partner on our first date wore Birkenstocks with black socks. And 
I yeah. was like, no. if we're going to continue to date, this can never happen again. <laughs> yeah. Birkenstocks with no socks. Sure. sure. With socks, deal breaker. Deal breaker. Deal breaker. <laughs> it's a deal it breaker. It makes you a little bit feel like they're going to wear socks to bed. I don't know what it is. It's oh my God. <laughs> I, okay. Although I do have to say that Leo gets really mad. I don't, I, I try to be a little more cautious about it now, but like I walk barefoot constantly. Yeah. I'm always barefoot in my backyard, in my driveway. Like I don't care. I'm always barefoot, except for if I'm in like Venice. Like I wouldn't be barefoot on like a public street in LA because yeah. people pee and poo on those. And so I would not do that. But in my own home property, I'm always barefoot. So my feet are always dirty. And Leo is, Always so mad at me. He's like, wash your feet before you get in bed, Bridge. You're disgusting. <laughs> oh, and I don't. <laughs> I don't always do it, dear listeners. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to be honest with you. Always be honest with you. I don't always. I just feel like you put socks on and you just cover it up. You're like, nobody Nope, I don't do that either. I just, I just wash the sheets <laughs> later. I just wash the sheets often. That's all I do. Wash them. Uh, yes. Wash the as sheets. As long as those toes ain't on me, I'm like, whatever. Like, I, yeah. I've given I- up. I've given up hoping that my partner has clean feet in the bed. I am religious about my feet being clean when I get in the bed, but that's because I, again, strict parenting. Like, you can't yeah. even sit on the bed with your outside clothes, like, growing up. Like, your street clothes are street clothes. You come in, you change into your play clothes. Oh, you're like Mr. Rogers. <laughs> yes. A- absolutely. Every time you go in and out, you have a whole a new whole outfit on. A whole new outfit on. <laughs> like, and they don't, cr- your play clothes are your play clothes. And those are like, you know, and then your outside clothes for playing are outside clothes for playing. But no matter what, when you walk in the house, you're changing to a clean bit of like clothing before you ever sit on your bed or on the couch or any good furniture, that sort of thing. So, like, that's like an ingrained thing in me that I'm actually trying to like let go of. It's very hard. So one of the first one of the first things I did was like trying to let go of my partner having like the cleanest feet when they get in the bed. I'm just like, you know what? You want to live a good life, Shawnee? You don't want to be stressing about stupid ass <laughs> things like this. Can't be like stressing this. about that. You know what I mean? And it doesn't it doesn't really matter. You'll change the sheets. I change the sheets so yeah. often, you know, or yeah. whatever. It's like we don't have. Yeah foot fetishes so we're not playing with each other's toes yeah, like that that's see if i i did hook up with someone once with a foot fetish and for a variety of reasons the main one being curiosity and <laughs> this <laughs> I mean, podcast on, is taking turns <laughs> it's taking turns you guys let me tell you it was some of the sexiest foreplay because we d- hadn't met we met on the dating app tinder back in my tinder days hey. and he mentioned some comment about my feet and i was like in my mind, I was like, man, if he really likes feet, I got I better like. So I pumice stoned my feet, put on some nice nail polish, put on some sexy shoes, and I sent him a picture of my feet. Shawnee, the dirty chalk got dirty. Sploosh. I got <laughs> dirty. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hell yes. I was like, I don't think I'm going to ha- get any, like, I didn't. I, spoiler, I did not get any actual pleasure from my feet being near him. Yeah. He was loving it. But, like, the dirty talk that went into it mm-hmm. and, like, him being, like, telling me what he wanted me to do and stuff, I was like, oh, oh, sweet baby Jesus. Oh, it was a very sexy encounter, you guys. <laughs> very, very sexy encounter. It's a high-rise hotel. We had cocktails overlooking L.A. Mm, speaking, mm. Of, uh, speaking of uh, mm. feet, do you, yes. you kind of want to run barefoot in these highlands, don't you? <laughs> Uh, I have, and it's wonderful. I would do it again. I've also skinny dipped in some blocks. Oof. Guys, it's really fucking cold. When she jumped in the water and then almost drowned, I was like, I feel that acutely. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that acutely because I did skinny dip in the middle of the night with two very, very wonderful boys. Oh. And we did not stay in the water long, tell you that much. We had to jump out <laughs> real quick to get our towel. So it wasn't the... Uh, <sighs> sensual skinny dip you would imagine um it was still fun though but i did not thankfully get a cramp that almost drowned me i walked out <laughs> but it was cold as hell it was cold as hell that was actually a funny scene because i felt like um it was one of the moments where she wasn't superwoman you know mm-hmm. um also another moment where she wasn't superwoman was when she got like pushed in the house and then the door was barred and set on fire and there was yeah. there was this point where she just resigned herself to the fact that um, Alec she was gonna get out. Was, like she was gonna get out and he was gonna save her. And I felt like that was a little bit out of character. I know she was like figured out she couldn't get out, but I really felt like she would keep trying until she was dead. Like that mm. like that was more of her character. And and I just got mm. this inner dialogue that was like, 
I'm like, don't worry, Alex will, uh, Alec will be here. Alec will save me and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I was like, bitch, keep fighting. <laughs> what are I you imagine- doing? So in my mind, it was because like she had tried to get out and there was so much smoke. This is a little cottage like filled with smoke and fire. Yeah. So I was imagining that she was just like getting so weak that she was just like on the floor. Mm-hmm. And I was thinking of it more as like a almost like a litany. Like Alex will come. Like he'll. It's gonna be like because she like couldn't do anymore. Got you. That's how I was reading. It, it. could be like versus that. It could versus be like that. she was just like you know what I'm gonna stop fighting lay down real quick just <laughs> wait for him to come get me. I'm gonna sit this I one out. I thought it was more like yeah I'm gonna sit this one out. I thought it was more like she was banging on the door. She was screaming. People knew she was in there. She couldn't get out clearly, and she was just like breathing so much smoke. Um, she did recover from her smoke inhalation right quick, but they had a nice sexy love scene. So I was like it's okay. They I did. forgive you. Well, he took it. He took a nap midday. I yeah, thought that was midday. I thought that, that was cute. He's like, "Don't let anybody bother me. I'm taking a nap." <laughs> yeah, and his friend's like in the middle of the day, and he's like, "Hello, a dur." He's like, "Oh, a nap. Mm. Have a good nap." <laughs> Is that oh. what we're calling it now? Naps. <laughs> a, little, uh. a little afternoon nap. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. I hope my children in the future know that if, like, mommy and daddy are going to take a nap, they better stay the fuck away from us. <laughs> better go watch TV. Better go watch TV. I just realized how, how many times we banged on my parents' door and they told us to go watch TV. That, like, 100% yeah. of those times they were banging. Because my parents yeah. were very strict about TV. We couldn't watch it. So... Now I'm like, every time they said, go watch TV. Oh, for sure. They knew. Oh, for sure. Because they wanted the noise, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They, 100%. But like, 100%. I'm, I'm just like, son of a bitch. That was a lot of times. <laughs> yeah. Well, your ki- your parents had a lot of children, so they were definitely having sex. Oh, yeah. For a sure. A lot of you. For sure. Yeah. A lot of you out there. <laughs> um, I, so obviously, like we said, Annie's the killer. Yeah. Um, and she was like deranged. I thought they did a good job of like him realizing it was Annie when she's talking about how sometimes people who are raised in cruelty get a little twisted. And he yeah. like immediately was like, oh, light bulb, it's gotta be Annie. And they were trying to like catch her in the act basically so that they had a reason to like know. Um, I did like the finale where the king, so comes? like we said, she's, she, yeah. The, so the king comes and she's playing this whole surprise where she's going to finally wear his colors and she's going to come down and she's going to kneel before the king and pledge her loyalty in Gaelic. And he's going to know that she, you know, speaks Gaelic and it's going to be this whole thing. She's like so excited about it and it gets completely thrown off by <laughs> like, the you know, like all these visitors who are coming and the king's coming and these twins come and one of them tries to like basically molest her and like kiss her. And she's like, you better let me go or I'm going to get Alec and I'm going to get you. And she comes back out with this giant mason club and hits his twin brother, doesn't know it's him, <laughs> and starts another war almost. And um, and she like runs inside and she's so sad because all of her pleats keep getting messed up. Yeah. She wants to look good for the king. And she goes, and there's this, like, warrior by the thing, and she confesses, like, and then I started a battle with them because I took this baby. I just wanted to help the baby, and then I did this, and then I did this. And and, um, and he's like, well, how would you have, you know, knelt before the king and given your loyalty? And she's like, well, I guess I could use practice, and kneels down and says it to him. And then she goes and hugs Alec, and she's like, how much did you hear? And he's like, everything. And she goes, well, I didn't know your king was so nice. And she's like, how, he's like, how long did you know? And she's like, well, when he asked me to kneel down, I figured it out. <laughs> just, like, she's also like, don't tell him. I don't want him to feel bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that was funny. Yeah. Oh, but I thought that was really cute. I like that uh, she got her blessing and they figured out about the Gaelic. And, and I don't know, I, the, I did really like that the Annie thing was not some drawn out, like, yeah. who done it. It was like, he was like, mm-hmm. oh, I suspect I know who it is, and very quickly let's set this up so that, you know. But af- after he kind of thought he knew who it was, she still got attacked after that scenario. Yeah, because yeah, because someone else was supposed to be watching Annie, um, but she like escaped out the window or something or something like that. Because so Marcus was obviously watching um, Jamie. And someone was supposed to be watching Annie. So they were supposed to follow Annie to where they were and then be like, Annie, we've got you. Yeah. But they slipped her. So then she was able to like bash Marcus from behind. Yeah. And then um, stab her in the arm stab and stab Jamie. And then and yeah. Jamie was able to like sort of jump to this ledge and save them and kind of keep them away from her. 
was definitely uh I don't know. It was definitely interesting, but I was I was very happy that it didn't play out too long in the story. Yes. Yeah, and even like once She's like, what will you do with her? And he was just like, that's not for you to know. Basically, he was like, you don't need to know. You're like, and again, like it was the times. It's like, you're the wife. I'm here to protect you. You don't need to know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do what I have to do. Yeah. And I liked that she kind of was like, okay, and just accepted it. And then it didn't become this like, like you said, drawn out thing later where it's like, oh, but poor Annie, but poor Annie. But it was like, yeah. okay, well, that that we've closed that door. Yep. We've tied it up. Edith is going to stay. Marcus is going to stay. And, and see. you know, yeah. I and did, see. I did like that too because I thought that in general, he knows that she's paying shillings every time for his soul and what's happening. And, mm-hmm. and just because she killed that one guy doesn't mean she's okay with death or wanting someone to die. So, I mean, I, I took that more as like, he he was going off Annie. Annie was was going oh for sure going to get it, and he didn't need her to have that on her conscience, like yep. about about it. So which I thought was like a very loving, uh, thing for him, you know, to do. And then I also really liked at the very end of the story when Andrew came. So Andrew mm-hmm. was uh the her suitor who kind of already paid a dowry to her dad because he was in debt and he needed the money. Um, and then of course, uh, like she marries someone else. So he kind of comes to, to the Highlands for her. And there's a scene, which I think is just really awesome because in general, I, I am a stand by your man type of person. Like, mm-hmm. even if my man is wrong. Right. So like, it's kind of like this, like if, if we're out in the streets and something goes, pops off and I know he's in the wrong, I'm still going to fight about it. I'll just fight him when I get home. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Like, it's like united mm-hmm. front, and then we get home and be like, you stupid ass, what the, f-? like, what, you know, <laughs> yeah. what is you doing? Yeah. You know, um, yeah. so, uh, so I like this uh, scene where um, Andrew comes in. And so he's like, come, he's, he's uh, a little bit away from Alec, and Alec says, uh, we cut off a man's feet when he trespasses on our land. And Andrew says, you wouldn't let him do it, would you, Jamie? Uh, and Jamie's expression was very serene. Andrew, she called out in a voice as cold and clear as a frigid winter's morning. My husband does whatever he wishes to do. I am sometimes allowed to help him. If he decides to cut off your feet, I will, of course, offer him my assistance. And I was like, yeah, that's love right there. <laughs> yeah, and and like in between those two lines, she says, some, she says something, or she like looks to him for permission to speak, which I thought was was a nice nod to the fact that she accepts that he is the Lord. Yeah. So she'll like challenge him in front of their family and friends. But like when it matters, like mm-hmm. she's like no, no, giving no, him that, re- that reverence yeah. in front of, yeah, in front of his, uh, all the people. And especially in front of this, yeah. in front of Andrew, who mm-hmm. like is already looking to disrespect the situation just by showing up, right. you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did think that was like an, a cute little, interaction mm-hmm. with them at the end. Yeah, and there. then all, you know, the niceness of all of the different lords giving a ruby to repay the debt of, like, saving the son and saving the other son and, you know, bringing Mary, like, defending Mary yeah. and, and you know, all these people who are, you know, one guy was paying, like, a future a debt future to, debt. like, so yeah. she, which I thought was nice, like, his wife was pregnant and he wanted her to come to make sure that the birth goes well. Yeah. And uh, as we know, dude, that a, a valuable midwife, like man, worth their weight in gold. Gold because mm-hmm. childbirth ain't no joke, people. It's crazy to me. Um, it's crazy, and uh, yeah, I thought it was great. I thought the whole book was great. You guys, we're gonna take a quick break, but I think you already know we thought the book was great. But we're gonna take a quick break and we're gonna tell you our rating. Mm-mm-mm. We're taking a break. Hello, best friends. Thank you for being loyal listeners of Romance at a Glance. We're so happy to have you. If you'd like to support us further, head over to Patreon, where you can become one of our patrons. We've got a lot of great perks, such as merch and a super secret discussion group where Bridget and I talk to you directly about all things romance and all things nasty. So come on over. And now, back to our show. Okay, we're back. So, Shani, what did you think about Jamie? Uh, Jamie was super fire. I liked her. I liked that she was independent. I liked that she generally stayed the same uh, person throughout the book. I mean, she grew in terms of I'm trying to find her place in the Highlands. Um, But she didn't lose her ambition or goals for what she wanted, basically, from herself, her life, and that sort of thing. Um, I think a couple times we've had that gripe where it's like a person has these dreams and then they get with a dude and then those dreams just go away. And 
you know, bye, dreams. goodbye, dreams. Fly free, fly free. <laughs> yeah, you know, and that didn't happen with her. She was always outspoken. Um, she was always trying to subvert um, Alec <laughs> and just get what she needed done. Um, I don't think anything's changed in womanhood, and <laughs> for, for, for better or worse, we're always having to subvert these <laughs> dudes. Um, but uh, I did really, really enjoy her. I thought she was plucky and uh, full of just fire, and you know. And so I gave her a five. What about you? I also gave her a five. I think she was the best. I loved her so much. I thought this book was funny. I thought this book was like compassionate. I thought there was a lot of just like warmth and fire in her character. So she was very like kind and loving, but also had like the temper and like the determination to back it up. Like when she saved his sol- his soldier at the beginning, she's like, he's not dying, you idiots. Get out of my way. I'm going to save him whether you want me to or not. Yep. And like, I liked that sort of like steely resolve she had, but also like wrapped in like her being unsure of like his affection and and wanting it and, and falling in love with him and being worried that he wouldn't love her in return. Um, I thought she was great. I thought she was a five-star heroine for me. Nice. Very nice. Uh, Alec. I gave him five stars. Okay. I almost gave him four stars, but we don't do half stars, Shani. So I'm going to go up because Alex worked for me. He was a big, strong man. He's giving her the pleasure, tossing her around, chasing her in the fields and fucking her. And I was like, not mad at it. Not mad, not at, mad it. at it, Shani. Not mad at it at all. Um, I like that he was always like teasing her to like get her anger up when he knew she was like sad or anxious. So he was like riling her up to get over that, which I thought was a really sweet thing he did. Um, remarkably understanding about all the feuds she started. <laughs> he only yelled at her one time in the book. He only yelled at her one time in the whole book. And uh, I I didn't feel like he was as, like, fleshed out as her, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. Like, he, I didn't get, so, like, I understood the root of all of her things, but I didn't really feel like we ever got to understand the root of all of his things. Like, a lot of the things that he started to get over were, like, rooted in, Helena, his first wife, killing herself, or so they thought. And they're like, oh, he never spoke about her. And then he started to, like, talk about her and, like, open up to those feelings. They adopted Helena's daughter. Uh, We didn't even talk about that, but they adopted Helena's daughter, Mm -hmm. and she became their daughter. But, like, I don't feel like we ever got to know, like, more about, like, how he was raised. Like, we know all about her, but we don't, we didn't, I didn't feel like I got as close to him. Uh, But I still gave him five stars, because I was between a four and a five. And as you know, we don't get half stars. stars. <laughs> it's a five. Well, it's a I th- five star hero. I think that's actually why the cover that you have is more fitting um, because mm-hmm. it centers around her in the Highlands. Yeah. And I, I agree <laughs> with you. This book for me centered around her story in the Highlands and then their love. Um, and I don't know if I'm mad about that or not. Um, mostly because um, sometimes I just don't want that much backstory. But you are correct <laughs> in the fact that uh, you didn't get a whole lot of where he was coming from. Um, I was with you. I was actually between a four and a five. And as you know, we do not do half stars. So I gave him a five. And uh, <laughs> for the most, and mostly because I look for growth in the characters. So, like, mm-hmm. no matter where the book starts, whatever a dirt bag they are, they're at a three. <laughs> And if they're just not at that spot at the end of the book, they generally will get a four or five. Um, And so I think when he first met her, he was very matter of fact. He's like, I'm going to break her and like, you know, uh, I'm going to own her. And it was all more about ownership and that sort of thing. And when the book ends, it is very much about a partnership. You can you see him soften to her. You see him that he uh, is always joking with her. And throughout the book, you see him uh, uh, come to understand that she doesn't understand his jokes uh, as well as he thinks <laughs> she does. Uh, and he starts kind of tweaking the jokes and making them a little bit more fun for her to be involved in as well, which I thought was um, an interesting thing to see. And I just felt that like he ended the book a better person than when he started it. And they ended up yeah. like a better couple. She ended up a better person than when she started it. And... Uh, and so I thought that was really great. I liked that his, the priest and his and Gavin, his like second in command, were both like, 
oh, he's got his hands full. They were always like chuckling behind his back. <laughs> like he doesn't even know he's in love with her. Like, oh, this poor guy. <laughs> She's got him wrapped around his finger. Just like, I thought that was very, that's always fun when those characters add just a little bit of like fun to a character because they add like a little bit of a different side that we don't see when he's with her. Yeah, um, for sure. Did did you think he was a McDreamy or a McSteamy? Interesting enough, I thought he was a McDreamy. Um, I did think that their sex scenes were very nice. I liked the dirty Gaelic talk or whatever, but it will it was like a little tiny bit of steam, but, but mostly I thought he was like a solid guy, like yeah. you know, from the jump all the way through. And like he gave her that kind of safety and stability. And for me, that's a McDreamy. I said he was a McHighlander. <laughs> But I agree. If I had to choose McDreamy or McSteamy, I would choose McDreamy. Because this was definitely a vanilla. Very vanilla, yes. Book. Uh, Lovely. Good dirty talking. A little fun. Mm -hmm. Uh, But vanilla. And as we know from the lit wallflowers, sex outside is still very vanilla. Still very vanilla. Right, Tony? (laughs) (laughs) Shani, did you have a favorite review? I did. I did. Uh, So this review came from somebody whose name I did not write down. And they gave it 4.5 sparkling stars for a fun and really entertaining sweet historical romance. It's not a single minute without anything happening, and battles with neighbors, clans are close to flaring up again. Jamie has a way of stepping in all pits. The banter and the dialogue are exuberantly fun, and I am with this hot Highlander Alec and his lovely bride Jamie from page one until the nice romance ends. Sure, it's predictable and of course kind of unrealistic, but always with great warmth, sweetness, and it's also funny, wonderfully written. I love novels in this style and genre. Must just take me the time and read more of these extraordinary good old historical romances. Nice. Yeah, I I, I generally... Uh, felt that way. Like, I didn't feel like the story itself was, like, some new invented type of tale uh, or whatever, but it was, like, a funny, like, solid read. Like, I would not regret reading uh, this book. There were a couple times I laughed out loud, and I was, like, solid. So even though both the characters for me were fives, I actually gave the book a four. Plot twist. Yeah. (sighs) Uh, my favorite review is from G's Spot Review. She gave it 4.5 stars. This was my first Julie Garwood and one of the few historical sovereign reads so far. And it got me hooked on her style and characters. This couple was absolutely perfect. They captured me from the very start. Interesting and dynamic, steamy hot and banter filled. The bride really had everything I was looking for in a romance. And I was like, you nailed it. Nailed it. It was also my first Julie Garwood. And I loved it also. Mm-hmm. And I would read for sure, more of her writing style and characters. Yep. And in fact, I started The Wedding, and I already like it a lot, and I'm waiting to get it from the library. And I gave this book five stars, Shani. I think this was my favorite book of season five, season four. Shani, I'm going to go out on a limb and say this was my favorite book of season four. This tied with The Wallflower Wager from Tessa Dare. And it is not surprising that both have very, very funny dialogue and repartee and some dirty talk because those are my favorite things. They are your favorite things. And I, favorite I things. actually, uh, I agree. However, I read a book that you did not read this season. Lord of Scoundrels and Bringing Down the Duke probably were my top two because yeah. Bringing Down the Duke, I gave five stars. You did. I loved it because it was different. It was a different yes. sort of story and it was so well written. Uh, yes. And not only was it smart, but the doors were open. And so that, you're right, you were correct. It's probably bringing down the Duke, then Lord of Scoundrels, then this book. You guys, if you didn't catch our interview with Evie Dunmore yet, it is up and it was so great. She's so lovely. And also, dear patrons, I know that I promised you that I would be reading Lord of Scoundrels and also doing a review of it for Patreon And by review of the book, I mean a review of Shawnee's podcast without me. (laughs) And I have finished the book. And so I will be uploading that very shortly. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Patreon.com forward slash romance at a glance to get lots of cool BTS of the show and extra reviews and watch along parties. Um, Shawnee, I haven't even told you this yet. We're going to talk more about it next week. But we are going to be watching after. And 
after we collided. Okay. In like two weeks. In like two weeks. Okay. We doing a watch along? We are doing a watch along. Clear your schedule on the 23rd of October. It's happening. Actually, I don't know how we're going to make it. It's going to happen. We're going to make it happen. I don't know how. I'm going to make it happen. Because I don't think it's going to be on Netflix. I think it's going to be on like video on demand. Uh But maybe we'll watch the first movie, which is on Netflix. And then we'll like video on demand, like stream it or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. We'll I'm going to figure it we'll out. Figure it out. Te- we'll figure it out. Technology is going to happen. We're doing it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Bridget. I think that is all we have for the folks today. Man, this has been a lovely season with y'all. And we have loved all of the comments on Instagram, as you can see from our responses. I'm just so excited. I'm excited for the next season. I'm excited for life right now. I'm excited we're back together. We're reunited and it feels fucking good. You know what I'm saying? Feels so nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I am just so happy you guys are all here. Hello to all of our new listeners. We appreciate you. We're so happy to have you with us. Hello to all of our OG listeners. Hello, friends. What it is. We continue onward and upward. And just so you guys know, the podcast is climbing, climbing, climbing. Doing great week over week. And we are so thrilled that you guys continue to like it and review it and share it. And we could not be more happy to have you as our bosom buddies. Yes. All right, Bridget. Until next time, may your books be your lover. And your hands your best friend. Yowzas. Thanks for listening. Subscribe to our channel to get new episodes, clips, and more. And click here to watch our previous reviews and author interviews. 